Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is August 5th, 2024. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk the glamour division. Folks, that's the heavyweight division. Let's talk about Martin Bacoli's win over Jared Anderson. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's just put it this way. I made an earlier video where I was talking about how one of the fighters of the night was Jarrell Miller, right, who revived his career by getting a draw with Andy Ruiz. The public here corrected me, right? And you're right. I'm wrong. The fighter of the night wasn't Crawford, wasn't Madrimov, right? Was not Jarrell Miller, who did save his career. It was Martin Bacoli. Now, the reason I didn't mention Bacoli, and I know this will sound odd, is because I made a pre-fight video where I picked Bacoli to beat Jared Anderson. I thought the fight was mispriced. As I said in the video, I thought Bacoli should be the favorite. This was too much too soon. I mean way too much too soon. For Jared Anderson. Right? Anderson was talking about helping Tyson Fury uh, prepare for Usyk, provided Fury promised him that he would fight him down the road. Right? Jared... Excellent athlete, has no clue who he is in today's heavyweight division. Folks, I've said this in other videos. I stand by the comment. This is one of the deepest, in fact, it's not one of the, this is the deepest heavyweight division I have ever seen. Right, folks? Martin Bacoli who isn't as known as he should be, is a real threat to the heavyweight title. Here you had a young American guy. Let's think about Jared Anderson's big fights. Who, Jerry Forrest? You had a young American guy fighting a guy who outweighs him by more than 30 pounds. Think about that. More than 30 pounds. And who is complicated? This is your complicated heavyweight. Right? The only guy to beat him is also complicated. Michael Hunter. Folks, that's it. Right? Understand, from where I sit, Jared Anderson has never fought anyone on par with Michael Hunter. Right, let's talk about Bacoli's game. We'll try to sum it up in a few sentences. He looks like a big, clunky heavyweight. He looks like one. Folks, he's not. Right, just like George Foreman had one of the best jabs I've seen, right, great jab, just like George Foreman had above-average defense, you know, uh, a great jab, uh, knew how to do things like lean on you during clinches. Folks, Martin Bacoli is that rare long-range hooker. Worse yet, Martin Bacoli doesn't have to hook you at the end of this fight. You'll notice Bacoli start throwing straight punches with both hands. In fact, the guy's so advanced that he drops Jared Anderson for the last time off a right uppercut. Look at the footage. When Anderson gets up, this is when you figure out how good a fighter is. When it looks like Bacoli is one punch away from pulling off an upset. What does Bacoli do? He comes in and he throws a left uppercut. Folks, this guy, like Xili Zhang, is extremely two-handed. 
It's only our bias against big men who don't move fast, who aren't trying to match the movement of an opponent. It's only our bias that has us underestimating this guy. Put simply in a sentence, this is the poker player who deliberately tries to look like a big clunky heavyweight when he's not. This is your highly skilled craftsman. So understand the wasted energy here. And I know Anderson, he's back by top rank. You saw Sugar Hill in his corner. You know, Anderson, highly thought of, uh, top rank, released a video before the fight calling him the future heavyweight champion. Right, folks? Anderson walks around with a bravado that a young guy who's unbeaten walks around with. Right? During this fight, and the fight doesn't go that long, by the second round, Anderson understood he was not alpha in the ring. And this was against the guy, again, Bacoli, he's a magician. He's creating an illusion. Here is Bacoli in Los Angeles, right, in California, outside of, you know, Scotland, right, where he's the last king of Scotland. Here he is on the road against a slugger who's a better athlete. Right, let's be clear on that. Anderson looks like he can move and, you know, outmove you. Right, Anderson's the better athlete. Anderson, huge puncher, has a signature right hand. And where are Bacoli's hands? Folks, they're at his side. I'm, I'm not kidding. Bacoli is just standing there. You know what he's relying on as Anderson's trying to throw on him? He's relying on head movement. Right, so Anderson does something I thought was brilliant. This was a chess match. Anderson comes out and is a southpaw. Right, as you watch him, and he has some fluidity as a southpaw, right? He's throwing jabs in the first round from the southpaw position. It's audacious, right? Just to understand, he's not fighting a 25-year-old. He's fighting a guy in his 30s who has sparred. In fact, the rumor is he beat up Alexander Usyk, right? He sparred with Tyson Fury. Both of these guys have. Let's just say Bacoli has been around. Right, so here's Bacoli. He's not thrown or flustered by the fact that Jared Anderson is fighting him and Anderson is using his offhand. Right, no, no, Bacoli's a serious guy. Right, this is a guy who you come out left handed, he couldn't care less. Right, he just wants to figure out the angle. So you'll notice. The first half of the first round, Bacoli is looking at Anderson, doesn't have his hands up most of the time, and is studying where Anderson is. He figures it out, right? So he then starts capitalizing on the fact that Anderson isn't fluid enough to be Ali. Right? Anderson, better athlete, but he's not a mover. Right? He's not a guy who can come in and say, hey, the first few rounds, I'm just going to throw a jab. Larry Donald, another guy, if you remember him from his career at heavyweight. Right? Um, he just doesn't have that level of commitment to movement. So here you have Bacoli, and understand, this is a guy who can throw a lot of punches. He's very much like Usyk in that regard. Right now, Usyk relies a bit too much, in my opinion, on a straight left. This is the guy who, when he starts throwing punches, folks, he's throwing uppercuts. With Jared in front of him, 
throwing punches back. This is the technician who can operate in a rainstorm. He's throwing a wicked left hook. Understand, he can throw these hooks from distance. Jared Anderson, who really can't stay out of the pocket that long, starts getting battered by the end of the first round. McCauley lands an uppercut on Jared Anderson and drops him. On the telecast, they say Anderson was dominating this round for 2 minutes and 55 seconds. Folks, he looked good the first 2 minutes and 55 seconds because Bacoli let him look good. Right? Bacoli, understand the setup here. Bacoli is letting Anderson hit him in the body. Right? That's Bacoli's game. The flaws make the diamond. Bacoli needs Anderson to be around the pocket. Anderson has the faster foot speed. Right, so Bacoli's standing there. He comes in weighing more than 280 pounds. He's looking at Anderson. He gives the illusion that he's vulnerable to the body. When in actuality, if you step too close to him, he's going to start throwing uppercuts. He can do so with both hands. An uppercut catches Jared Anderson. He goes down. Folks, I would argue that Anderson is never fully back in the fight the rest of the way. Right? Anderson can't clinch Bacoli, in part because of the threat of uppercuts with both hands. Right? He can't clinch Bacoli. Anderson's afraid to get too close to Bacoli. Anderson's throwing his jab. Bacoli's unmoved. Bacoli moves his head enough where he's not getting hit in the head with the jab. Bacoli's taller than Anderson. He understands he has a height advantage. This fight descends into Bacoli on his front foot. Think about that. In the United States, backing up Jared Anderson, who is too young to think about the fact that he can dance away from the pocket, that it's his minor title at stake, that he can give away some early rounds. So we could find out if 280 plus pound Martin Bacoli has the stamina to do damage against a younger guy in the later rounds. No. Jared Anderson unbeaten doesn't doesn't know failure enough to understand that he's failing here right he's standing in front of Martin Bacoli right understand <laughs> there are few people in any weight class who are better in the pocket than Martin Bacoli. And Bacoli, of course, is so advanced that he's lying to Jared Anderson. In other words, Bacoli has his hand speed, let's say, at 55 miles an hour. It's in the last round that Sergio Mora picks up on the fact that Bacoli can actually throw his hands faster than 55 that this guy is giving a presentation like a poker player does, right? You're playing poker, someone looks like they're inebriated, you know, they're wearing glasses, they look out of it, but in actuality, they're counting cards, right? This is a card counter. So the fight, believe it or not, actually becomes a mismatch. The world changes once we get past the end of the first round when Jared Anderson hits the canvas. Understand, Jared Anderson is so accustomed to doing on to others, to winning by stoppage, that there are times where he has complete defensive lapses. 
where Bacoli hits him and Anderson doesn't have a hand up. Anderson's been lingering in a spot too long, right? Lingering in front of Bacoli, has his head leaning over the pocket to the point where Bacoli's corner was telling him, throw uppercuts. And of course, Bacoli drops Anderson off an uppercut. Right, that's the last knockdown of the fight. Right, so just understand, I, boxing's a young man's sport. The heavyweight division is a unique division. Look at all the guys in their 30s. Heavyweights, remember Dwyer's rule of relativity. Heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. They really do. So here you have a young guy, folks. Anderson might as well have been 18 years old. He fell for every lie that Bacoli was presenting. Right? Anderson must have thought to himself, Bacoli's body is wide open. He's just standing there. Bacoli doesn't try to move away. He's just standing there. He has his hands dropped. It's in your 30s that fighters stop and think, is this a trap? Does this guy want me around the pocket? Right? Is this guy trying to lull me into a false sense of security where I'm focusing on his body while he's focusing on hitting me with uppercuts? Do I even have the edge on this guy in hand speed? Or is this hand speed he's showing me in rounds one and two? Camouflaging better hand speed that the guy can show me later in the fight. Let me tell you, on the telecast, they talk about George Foreman. They even mention Michael Moore, famous fight, right? Foreman becomes the oldest heavyweight champion. Understand what Foreman said about that fight. Foreman said that he got close to Moore early, but he decided not to hit Moore with his hardest punch because Mora was well rested. And if Foreman showed Mora the power that he had, Mora might be able to survive the punch and then stay away from Foreman the rest of the fight. So here you have Foreman in his 40s fighting heavyweight champion Michael Moore. And Foreman's pulling the punch. Foreman is lying to Moore. Right, so of course later in the fight, Moore thought that he could take Foreman's punch. He couldn't. Not Foreman's real punch. Folks, here, Martin Bacoli, this is a PhD guy. This is, <laughs> I like to use the phrase KG vet. By KG vet standards, this is the PhD guy. In the comment section of this video, tell us the line you got. One viewer in an earlier video already told me that he got a better than a plus 160. Let's go one step further. You understood. Jared Anderson in over his head. Right? Anderson was of the mindset that he could overpower Martin Bacoli. And you thought to yourself, Anderson doesn't have enough movement to stay away from, you know, for several rounds. That's not his game. He's not Usyk. The over-under on this fight, I believe, was seven and a half rounds. Folks, you were able to rob a casino in broad daylight on this. Right? You got Bacoli. He got you the win early. Because he got you the win early, if you bet on the under, you won on that too. There's a group out there who's shocked that Martin Bacoli won the fight. The Bacoli side of the ledger is shocked that people thought he should be the underdog. Understand, at one point in some pre-fight event, Bacoli turned to Jared Anderson and thanked him for taking the chance of fighting him. I have no doubt, and... Let's look out for this. I have no doubt that the guys Bacoli 
has sparred with, understood that Bacoli had no business being an underdog in this fight. Jared Anderson will bounce back what he needs to do. You want great fights? He needs to stay away from big, strong guys right now. He just got manhandled. Folks, he got knocked down multiple times. As I make this video, he has no clue how to deal with Bacoli's right uppercut. And I'm just telling you, Bacoli has a left uppercut. Right? Look at the Tony Yoka fight. You're going to notice a volume with Bacoli that he deliberately doesn't show to Jared Anderson here. Right? Bacoli's low volume in the first round. He's just looking at Anderson. He has his hands down. Right? Anderson should have looked at film and realized whether this guy has his hands up or down. I'm not going to be around the pocket. I need lateral movement. Right? I can't be within the area code of this man's right hand, which he can throw at odd angles. I need to be moving to his left. I need to be staying outside. Right? If he's low volume, I need to do just enough to win the rounds. Anderson should have been targeting the later rounds of the fight. He simply didn't have the experience or the firepower to deal with this level of fighter early in the fight. Right? You see Bacoli throwing uppercuts. And I'm just telling you, Anderson made it easy for him. Because Anderson, you know I like guys who lean backward. Right? Think about how a Vitaly Klitschko would have fought Martin Bacoli. He'd be leaning backward. Right? The wrong place to be is leaning forward over the pocket against this offensively blessed heavyweight. That's what Jared Anderson did. So, let's take a step back here. We need to keep boxing honest. Right? So, what I want people to do is to look at the United States. We all understand that the water is deepest right now in the heavyweight division in the United Kingdom. Right? You have Joshua. He's fighting Daniel Dubois. You have Tyson Fury. You have, um, you know, other fighters, Dillian White, uh, who, people forget, beat Joe Parker at one point. You have Fabio Wardley. You have Fraser Clark. You have Joe Joyce. You even have Derek Chisora. The UK is ground zero for the heavyweight division. So people have stopped talking about American boxing. Right? They shouldn't. Now, with Jared Anderson getting KO'd, with Deontay Wilder getting KO'd by Gili Zhang, with Andy Ruiz fighting to a draw, with Jared Miller and Andy looking rusty. I believe there should be no doubt in anyone's mind right now that the best American heavyweight is an immigrant from China. Right? Keep in mind, in the United States, we're in a absurd presidential election year where both the Republican and the Democratic candidate want high tariffs on Chinese goods. Well, all of these politicians are going to have to deal with the reality that the best heavyweight in the United States right now is Zhili Zhang. Folks, he lives in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Right? He is the best heavyweight in the United States. In fact, if you want to argue, even though he's lived here for like 10 years, if you want to argue that he's Chinese and he counts for China, with a recognition that boxing is a world sport. Shouldn't you be thinking to yourself, wow, the same guy is the best heavyweight in both the United States and China? Shouldn't that say a lot to you? Right, so just understand, with a focus here just for the moment, 
on American boxing. And clearly, Xili Zhang, he's been calling out Anthony Joshua. I believe Xili Zhang would not hesitate to fight either Joshua, Dubois, Fury, or Usyk. Right? This is a guy looking for action. He's now in his 40s. Right? But just understand, here in the United States, and I don't believe, because he's also complicated, he's too advanced for Jared Anderson. Right? I'm just, you know, if I'm Anderson, I stay away from punchers like this. Right? At least for now. If I'm him, I think about Caballal. Right? A guy who at least I'm bigger than. Right? Not sure if Jared Anderson wins that fight either. But just understand, if I'm Anderson, I try to fight a guy where my athleticism might be able to overpower him. I don't want to fight the KG poker player in Bacoli or the KG southpaw poker player in Zhili Zhang, who actually, both guys are two-handed, who aren't relying on just one punch, who can throw uppercuts and all these other punches. The end of the Zhili Zhang, Deontay Wilder fight. Did you notice Zhang hits Wilder, hurts him, then immediately you saw foot speed from Zhang you hadn't seen the entire fight. Zhang goes over there to finish off Deontay Wilder. Right, so if you're going to have guys fighting for the American title, right, you're going to have to pull out names like Gerald Miller, who would be a good fight for Zhang because... Miller's a guy who likes to be around the pocket and is throwing volume. That's an exciting fight. Understand, those are two of the premier American heavyweights right now. Right? Luis Ortiz, I know he's advertised as a Cuban. Folks, he lives in the United States. Jermaine Franklin, folks, he belongs in any kind of American box-off to determine who's the best American fighter. Right? I think Zhili Zhang beats Andy Ruiz because Andy is too tethered to the pocket. Right? But let's just say if you're looking at the top American heavyweights right now, I believe the answer is the man from China who's in his 40s. Right? Let's split up the heavyweight division a little bit more. With Jared Anderson losing, Folks, while I believe in Richard Torres, right, he's an up-and-comer, I'll concede Torres, who's a southpaw, doesn't have a great back foot. But understand, the heavyweight division right now is so 30 and older-ish, right? It's so top-heavy on age that there's really only one guy one guy in his mid-twenties right now, and no one really talks about it, who is toward the top of the heavyweight division. Think about the four guys who are fighting for heavyweight titles. Tyson Fury, mid-thirties, uh, Usyk, older than that. Anthony Joshua, he's now in his thirties. That London Olympics was a while ago, folks. Right? It's only Daniel Dubois who is in his mid-twenties right now toward the top of the heavyweight division. Right, It's a bit stunning. There isn't the outcry you would expect. Right, Dubois isn't being marketed as our generation, our time, up against these old guys. Now I can tell you, Boxing such a young man's game that I was watching a great fighter. This guy's first ballot, you know, people don't even have to see the highlights to know his first ballot. Saul Alvarez. And I just happened to be online. I had the computer on, and it was during the Jaime Munguia fight. A lot of the people online, right, I like to say they're fresh out the club. By that I mean you know, people in their early 20s, right? These are people just getting out in the world. Many of them are driving in their first car, are in their first jobs, 
Uh, the lifestyle, many are single. The lifestyle involves going clubbing, going pubbing, if people still do that. Uh, at my age, you'd be surprised that the numbers dwindled, right? But just to understand, here you had Canelo, who really warrants admiration against Jaime Munguia. Munguia was unbeaten at the time. I don't mean to diss the guy, right? He beat people like the Revianchenko. He fought his share of tough guys, right? I'll concede that. But the online X dialogue that I was following almost seemed like everyone was a member of Munguia's family, right? Nobody thought Canelo <laughs> was the guy they wanted to win. Nobody, right? You don't have that at heavyweight yet. Why not? Right? If Dubois beats Anthony Joshua, and Dubois, I'm not saying he's a better puncher, but what I'm saying is he's a damn good puncher. <laughs> I mean, you know, Dubois, in my opinion, was losing most of the Ergovic fight, uh, ends up winning it, right? Ergovic looked like his face had been hit by a brick wall. Uh, Anthony Joshua has gone down in fights, right? Klitschko fight, Andy Ruiz fight. Um, you know, if Dubois wins that fight, you know, Dubois might want to give a shout out to people his age, right? Understand, he is the young guy getting it done right now. It's you know, during my day, I mean, people like Tyson won the heavyweight title, and he was in his early 20s. Right, folks, you don't have a lot of people like that now. Right, you don't have a lot of youngsters. Understand, you know, Dubois is around Jared Anderson's age. Right, Anderson's just stepping up to the big time. Dubois has already fought Usyk, has already fought Ergovic has already fought Joe Joyce, right? It's something to think about. Sooner or later, Father Time beats all of us. A lot of these heavyweights are vibrant right now in their late 30s, early 40s, right? Sooner or later, they're going to look like they've slowed a little bit, right? Food for thought. Uh, Dubois, if he can beat Joshua, and that's a big ask, Right, would be really well positioned here as a generational type of player in, in my opinion, the glamour division in the sport. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. If you know of a great young heavyweight who you feel, the press, people on YouTube like me, are overlooking, tell us about it in the comment section of this YouTube video. You just had Jared Anderson try to put his name in the forefront of young guys about to take over the sport. Fighting Bacoli came too soon. Simply put, he wasn't ready. Simply put, he believed the lies Bacoli sold him. Right, folks, Bacoli, you get a glimpse of his real hand speed at the end of his fight when he starts throwing straight punches. I'm not even going to call them jabs. They're just straight punches with both hands. Right, this fight wasn't that close. Just ask yourself, where did Bacoli want Anderson? You know the answer to that. In range to get hit by uppercuts. Anderson gets dropped multiple times in this fight off uppercuts. Right? It would have been great. Let's name a great fighter. It would have been great to see Bacoli against Evanda Holifield. Right? Because Holifield is one of the few guys I know who would lean over the pocket and would have an arm bar in place. Right? Let me use my left hand. He'd have an arm bar in place to catch your uppercut and then to make you pay for even thinking about throwing an uppercut on him. Right? That's old school. 
Jared Anderson wasn't where Evander would have been in this fight. Right, so Bacoli, if he can lure fighters into the pocket and have them stick their heads out <laughs> so their head is in uppercut range, you're going to have more fights like this. Let me say this too. It was interesting. After the fight, they asked Bacoli who he wanted to fight. He mentioned Michael Hunter, right? That's a name you need to know. Hunter, of course, well into his 30s, right? Hunter is the guy who beat Bacoli. That's Bacoli's one loss. My advice to Bacoli is, player, we understand you have your personal battles. The, it would be a tremendous fight. But my advice really to both men is the heavyweight division is about to open up. Right? Guys are going to get older. Someone is going to win that Tyson Fury Usyk rematch. Someone is going to lose that Anthony Joshua Daniel Dubois fight. Right? They're going to be opponents who are going to be able to fight. I believe Bacoli won an intercontinental title from Jared Anderson. Right? Just like I don't want Fraser Clark fighting uh, Fabio Wardley again, or Joe Joyce fighting Derek Chisora again, right? Bacoli against Hunter, great fight. Two guys who you need to know. By the way, Hunter is in the running for best American heavyweight, right? Needs to be in the conversation. Just like that's a great fight. And if you don't know these names, you need to recognize how deep the heavyweight division is. My point to you is both of the guys are viable against anybody in the heavyweight division. Hunter already fought Alexander Usyk. That's an interesting fight. Usyk pulls away. Hunter claims he was not ready. I'd like to see that rematch. A few years from now, I'd like to see Jared Anderson in a rematch against Martin Bacoli. Right? Hopefully in that time, Anderson will have figured a few things out. Tell us how much you won. I think I have uh, my pre-fight video up on my main page here on YouTube on that Bacoli Anderson fight. Give it a look and give us your thoughts in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.